Welcome to Michael Potts Formula One. Everything Formula One, but from a photographer's point of view. The 2022 Formula One season is about to start. That's 22 races in 21 countries with 20 drivers. A whole new era of Formula One. New cars, new liveries. And it's all gonna start here under the lights in Bahrain. We've just completed three days of testing. And to be honest, I don't think anyone has a clear picture of who's gonna be the favorite. We do know that the cars are very, very different this year. But what we don't know is have any of the teams unlocked a secret that's going to give them dominance throughout the season. We'll only find that out on Saturday during qualifying when it's time for the teams to drop their shorts and show us what they've got. We have learned a few things from testing, starting with Haas. If you remember, Haas came to Barcelona testing under a cloud. Russia had just invaded Ukraine and had put the title sponsor and lead driver's position in jeopardy. Since then, we know that Nikita Mazepin is no longer racing for Haas and the title sponsor has been dropped. In his place, returned Haas driver, Kevin Magnussen, who raced for the team for a number of years. Kevin is an exceptionally talented driver. He was part of the McLaren Young Driver program. He had a podium in his first race. He's gonna add a lot of experience to the team. Mick Schumacher has won F3 and F2. Now he's up against a quality teammate and we can judge how good a driver he really is. The new Haas livery is a little bit disappointing. It's quite similar to the one they had in Barcelona. Personally, I'd have liked to have seen them return to their more traditional colors of black, gray, and red. Next up, Alfa Romeo. As you remember, Alfa Romeo brought a camouflaged car to Barcelona testing. We were all quite excited to see what the new livery was gonna be, and when I saw the renderings, I was actually quite disappointed. But seeing the car in the flesh, it's quite magical. It's, it's a really, really beautiful car. It's a hint to the past. This car has captured that history, that, that legacy, and has given it a bit of a modern twist. Very impressed with how it looks. Bottas got the fifth fastest time on the final day. Not that that means much, but it does show that the car is there and thereabouts. Next, Alpine. When Alpine came out of the blocks in Barcelona, they had that half and half livery, half blue, half pink. For the first two races, we're getting a solid pink car and it looks gorgeous. The only thing, I keep thinking I'm photographing a Force India of a few years ago, and it doesn't help that Esteban Ocon, who raced for Force India, is also racing for Alpine. The car looked very good on track, and this livery is, is a lot better than the half and half. Secretly, I'm hoping that they run this either the whole year, or they alternate between the pink and the blue. McLaren, I was very critical of McLaren's livery in Barcelona, and luckily they have changed it. Unfortunately, they've somehow made it worse. Instead of going lighter and bluer, like I was hoping they would, they've added a lot more black to the car. I don't quite know what they were trying to do with this. Uh, it doesn't really work for me. Generally, when you add a third color to livery, it does make the overall design a little bit weaker. They had other problems during testing. One of their drivers, Daniel Ricciardo, had COVID and wasn't able to take part in any of the testing. This meant that Lando Norris had to do the three days of testing by himself. The car looked very good in Barcelona, and now that we're in Bahrain, it's, it's just not as good. This could be that the cars are quite track sensitive, which would be quite exciting for the rest of the season. I really expect McLaren to be near the front of the grid after their good showing in Barcelona. However, they seem to have taken a step back relative to the other cars. This could be for a number of reasons, and we'll only really know what their true potential is on Saturday. Williams. Williams is another team that did very well in Barcelona, but appears to have taken a step back. They had some mechanical issues, a small fire. The car just didn't seem to have the same pace and presence that it had in Barcelona. Out of all the teams in the midfield, they're the ones that feel closer towards the back. And I really expected them to be challenging for Q3. Aston Martin. Sebastian Vettel came to testing wearing a Ukraine flag inspired peace helmet to show solidarity for the victims of the war. Unfortunately, we won't see Sebastian race this weekend because he's got COVID. In his place is the super sub himself, Nico Hulkenberg. Personally, I'm really excited to see the Hulk come back to Formula One. Under the lights, the car looks absolutely stunning. The green really pops and it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful, beautiful car. Alpha Tauri. Alpha Tauri looked great all test. The car put in a lot of laps and it looked really fast. I'm very excited to see what they do on Saturday. Mercedes. Mercedes stunned everyone at the start of the test, unveiling a car with radical side pods or radical no side pods. This had all of the teams scratching their heads, thumbing through the rule book to see if these side pods were legal and panicking that Mercedes had uncovered the silver bullet. During the course of testing, the car didn't really live up to potential. Some of the teams are claiming that Mercedes are sandbagging. This is something they've done in the past. 
So the fact that they're not topping the timesheets shouldn't concern any Mercedes fans. This is a game they sometimes play. Despite what Lewis says, don't discount Mercedes. Ferrari. Ferrari had another good test. Their car is incredibly reliable. They went through their entire program without any major concerns. The both drivers look really good. They look very comfortable in the car. They both look very, very happy, very relaxed. Ferrari have a very good chance this year of doing something special. And there's a, there's a buzz, there's an excitement around the team. And I wouldn't be surprised, I've said it before, if Charles Leclerc is the world champion. The car looks beautiful on track. It's one of the best looking Ferraris we've seen for a number of years. And I'm very excited to see what they do this weekend. Red Bull. Whereas Mercedes caused a flutter on day one, Red Bull caused a flutter on day three. Their upgrade package arrived in the morning. It instantly translated into better results. Sergio Perez had very strong running in the morning and Max topped the timesheets by half a second in the afternoon. The car looked very good. Unlike the Mercedes, it looked much more grounded, much more planted going into the corners. Whereas Mercedes came with a radical new design, Red Bull evolved what they'd originally had in Barcelona, making it tighter and getting the most out of their concept. Max was very relaxed around the paddock. He's got a confidence that comes with being a world champion. Based on the testing results, Red Bull do look like they have the strongest package, but we'll have to wait and see. The midfield is incredibly close. Who's going to rise to the top of that? How are the new tyres going to work? We have much bigger, heavier tyres. When I was in the pits, I saw a number of teams struggling with their front left tyres. These tyres are a lot heavier and they seem to put a lot more strain on the wheel drums. So keep an eye on that. Do the tyres affect the pit stops? How fast are these new cars? How do these cars compare to last year's cars in terms of lap time? We know they're heavier and they've had a lot of downforce removed. But Formula One engineers are geniuses. What's going to happen with the rivalries? What's going to happen when Lewis and Max come together? Will we see a new champion? Will we see a new pretender? Charles Leclerc or Carlos Sainz? Maybe even George Russell? There's so much to look forward to. It's going to be a fascinating weekend. I can't wait to see what happens. Join me for the next one in Saudi Arabia.